It's a little after 2.30 today on a Wednesday. It's the bullpen. I'm Tony Mack. That is Tricky Ricky. We are live at Toyota Field here in Madison getting ready for game two of a six-game series between the Trash Pandas and the Birmingham Barons uh, in which the Trash Pandas took game one last night. Last night was a wild, wild night. We'll recap pregame and during the game and everything else that went on. Uh, We also have... Plenty of other sports things to go over with today. We're going to have Ben Joyce on the show today, but he uh, hit us up uh, in the wee hours of the morning, like 1 o'clock, and was like, hey, I have a meeting with the team has a meeting at 1 o'clock. We can't do anything. So we pushed it to when we were available to do the podcast. So we're on now. Um, but the larger discussion I wanted to have with Ben Joyce um, as he, again, struggled a little last night. He leads the Trash Pandas and saves the lead in, in the Southern League is six. He has four, so he's still doing well. He's finding some things to, to have some success. But overall, he's he's struggling finding the plate when I've seen him. And, and I've seen a lot of complaints, not even from pitchers. I've seen complaints from hitters about the um, experimental baseballs that they're using in uh, AA this year in the Southern League, what that means, um, how it's impacted the game so far. Um, how long that's expected to go on. I wanted to discuss that with him. We can get into a little a bit of that here in a little bit as well. Um, we have a, a package that we're going to open today. Go ahead and show them a little bit of what we got going on today. The mystery package that we heard about on Monday. You saw it in the comments on YouTube. The uh, the care package from my adopted father and mother, uh, the Yovan family. Uh, it's in the mail right here. It says on the front cover up all this. It's, I won't even show it. Look, it says, please open this package during your next YouTube live. Tony Trash Panda and Tricky Ricky. So here it is. Both of our names are on it. There's some very pretty stamps on it with flowers. I believe that's a begonia. That's a weeping willow. And that is a... Uh, that might be one of the flowers that the cousin of Montana deals with, actually. I don't know what that one is. But. This this sticker also, I believe there's one of those on the back you might be able to show. Show that right there. Opening this package may cause extreme happiness. I mean, who doesn't like that? Who doesn't love something like that? So, what I want to do before, we're not going to open it right away, because um, I want everybody to be able to get in here and enjoy it. The only one I see in here so far that's at least uh, said good morning or good afternoon is Virgil. Uh, afternoon, Virgil. Uh, Virg, how you doing, buddy? Uh, but I, I do want to go ahead... Before we open it, feel around a little bit. Will you, you got any guesses? Oh, buddy, I, I've been going. Uh, I've been going Christmas morning all over this thing. I've shook it. I've sniffed it. Uh, I've, uh, I've I've grabbed it. I felt the edges. It feels like there might be something in there with a hard edge. I don't know. Um, a lot of theories. My mind has been. I haven't. I haven't slept in two days. <laughs> Look, uh, this as you can see, the seal has not been broken. I do not have a copy of these stickers. I don't. I don't have that. So uh, it has not been broken. You don't understand the temptation too, because in the office they heard about it too, and they're like, "What's right. in the package?" And said, "Look, we can't. Don't even bring it up, because the more we talk about it, the, the more likely we are to give in to temptation and open this thing." <laughs> That's been the big thing. Is the office has tried to pressure us into opening this package. Uh, we've had. Um, People turned into uh, the people's character have been questioned ar- around this package. People that I thought were were uh, you know wholesome, good citizens are like, hey, they'll never know if you break it, break this. We can reseal it, right? We can just. Oh yeah, they were coming up with all these ploys. Like I said, I haven't slept in two days. I sat in front of my desk drawer all last night. <laughs> I told Ricky when we got it. I said we got it later Monday after the podcast. I said you put that in your drawer, and I don't want to see it for two days because I can't. I want. I almost gave in to temptation. I'm like, I, I want to see what's in here, but I won't do it because the Yo Bands have been nothing but great to us. So we're uh, we're definitely going to save that for a little later in the show. But we did get your package, guys. We are not going to open it uh, until a little later in the pop. We will open it for the first time here 
on this podcast. I got to open this thing, You're man. I got yeah. the I got the package shakes, man. I got to open this thing. You have to relax. All right, we'll talk. We'll talk right. about some other stuff. I'll be yeah. All right. First I'll thing to talk about, like Virgil alluded to last night, was fun. Panda's got the dub, man. Panda's got a win last night. It got a little shakier. It's officially it what? To. It's a winning streak. There you go. Three in a row, baby. And uh, the losing streak for Birmingham continues. Uh, they've now lost ten in a row. Woo! It's a rough streak. That's a, a home stand. That was a half a home stand, and then a whole home stand, and then the first game of this home stand. It's not good. It's not good. Which means they're due. They're due for a win. I wouldn't be surprised. Hopefully not until next week, then. If Birmingham gets a win this series, I wouldn't be surprised. They got one when we went to Birmingham a few weeks ago. But we have to at least win four games. We're the better team. Got to. Got to at least got to win this series. No ties, no nothing, no losing it. Can't have it. Uh, got to see some stuff out of the trash pans we haven't seen at home much, which was consistent scoring throughout the game. I think they scored in every inning, but maybe like the fifth and the ninth or something. We also had uh, three two-run home runs in that game last night. Yep, that's right. Got to see the ball leave the park a couple times. I haven't seen a ton of that. Or we, I know there were at least two two-run home runs. One of them may have been a solo, but we had a lot of home runs. We had three home runs last night. So that was nice. Uh, we had ooh, the first one, Tucker Flint, his two-run shot. That Love was it. So we had somebody, and excuse my language here, but we had somebody in the office on Monday during our sales meeting. They asked, um, they didn't know the term, the baseball term, piss missile. They didn't Whoa. know what that meant. They didn't know what that was. Mm-hmm. Tucker Flint's home run last night basically looked like the line drive to center field. 105 miles off the bat, 105 miles an hour off the bat, 439 feet my friends, that's a piss missile. Woo. There's your example of Jeez. what that means. Fair enough, man. Got to love baseball terminology mm-hmm. where a term of endearment can be something like that. Yeah. Tanked. It's another good one for a home run. Pimped. Pimped. Pimped that one, man. See, uh, there was a, a guy from Birmingham last night, I believe, hit a single, and he pimped it. Like he, he he bat flipped a single. <laughs> was it that blooper that just kind of lightly landed in left field? Yeah. He, he did. He pimped that uh, that blooper. What kind of missile is it? That's not a missile, is it? No, that's a – I don't know. That's a puddle. <laughs> it's a puddle, yeah. I don't know why. And again, they were down most of the game. The only time the Trash Pandas um, struggled was early because Maderos came in and struggled a little bit in the first inning, uh, but battled back and got the win. I mean, he, he really settled in, let the offense find their rhythm. Similar to his start last week, remember? Had a rocky ro- – <laughs> Had a rocky, a, 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 I'm having a rocky start to this sentence. Jeez, he had a rocky start to his outing on the mound. I think he gave up like five or six runs, and then didn't give up any for the next five innings after that. Yeah. Similar last night, but not quite five or six runs, just a few there, and uh, held it, man. How late he pitched? What into this? Did he finish six? I think he got through six, um, or they at least put him in in the sixth, and uh, it started to. Uh, you could tell that yeah. it was about time they were starting to, to figure him out. But um, they scored two in the first inning, and then when the relief pitching came in uh, to close out the game, they scored a couple in the ninth. It was eight to four. Going Luke Murphy inning. looked great. Colton Ingram yeah. looked great. And then they brought it into the ninth, and you had uh, two runs given up between Ben Joyce and um, Eric Torres. Eric Torres. Ben Joyce again, as I alluded to at the beginning, he, he's he's still effective because I mean he's got four saves this season. The Southern League lead in saves is six, so he's only two behind. He's still effective. But he, he's still struggling finding the plate. And he, he walked a lot of guys last night. And then Eric Torres came in, and he was good to hit at least one guy he did. And then he, he found it and recorded the last two outs. And we were able to walk away with a win. But it did get a little shaky. But we mentioned a lot of the things here at home where the Trash Pandas have struggled. It's one big bad inning that, mm-hmm. that kills us. Our big bad inning in the first was two runs. And then the big bad inning in the ninth inning was two runs. It wasn't that five, six run blow up that you've seen. Mm-hmm. And that allowed the offense to catch up. The offense put up eight runs eventually last night and ended up winning this bad boy. So it was really, really nice to see a more complete game pitching, um, especially those first eight innings. Again, in the ninth inning, there was a little trouble, but they managed to get out of it. Great to see the captain in the lineup, Ryan Aguilar. Mm. Oh. The, uh, like a player coach out there of sorts. And uh, he was in the lineup last night playing DH. The dude's on base percentage last year was like 460. I mean, it was insane. He's got the greatest eye in the world. He he probably could have been like a pilot or a military (laughs) sniper or something. He's got an unbelievable eye for the strike zone. And you saw it last night, man. He got on base 
a few different times. He got walked right before Tucker Flint hit mm-hmm. that um, two run hot, hit, two run hit that hit that urine shot out to. Well, how's it go again? Gonna piss me. Oh, my apologies. Sorry. Uh, right before Tucker Flint left the park, making that a two run home run, and just the little things like that, adding one run on the board, getting a good at bat, getting on base, and letting your guys do the rest. Ryan Aguilar leading leading on the field last night. Then I think he had a two run double as well later in the game. I mean that that guy's huge, and, and even uh, responding. Uh, to that first inning, uh, the, the trash bandits didn't take the lead to like the second or the third, but when Tucker hit that home run, but they at least scored a run to cut that lead in half in the first inning. The Barons went up two nothing. Trash bandits put one up in the first, which was nice, and then eventually took the lead with Tucker Flint's home run, uh, two run shot. So. Another guy that you failed to no, uh, mention so far uh, who had a failed. good la- good kidding. night last night. I think you're steering the narrative a little bit, buddy. I'm working I'm my big, way down there. I think you're steering the narrative because you said Jeremiah Jackson, the guy, requires a good night sleep away from his baby girl in order to have a good game well he was at home and i'm assuming he's at living in his home with his family while he is at home and that man had him a home run he had him a, a single i think he stole a base at one point he had a fantastic game last night so your theory kind of took a dive a little um and last night if you want to put just that game in a vacuum, absolutely. Yeah, Jeremiah was phenomenal last night. He had a home run. At one point, he was two for four. I can't, I'm can't. i trying to look up to see how his last at-bat went. So he's batting at least 500 through the first four at-bats. Um, so that was really nice to see. His first two at-bats, I think, was like a fly-out and a strike-out, and then he had two hits. He had the home run and something else. So I mean, yeah, it, did, negative. it did turn around really, really well. However, I just want to remind you that before last night, his batting and, and I didn't even. This wasn't even me that brought it up. The guy running the scoreboard. You see that packet right there next to the scoreboard? Yeah. That's all the splits entering this home stand. And on that, he looked and he goes, "Hey, have you seen Jeremiah's splits home and away?" And I'm like, "I'd be interested to see what the 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 sheet says." He's batting over 400 on the road. Before last night, he was batting 077 at home. So there was some merit to it. And then he went on last night to have a great night. So hopefully that is starting to change. And he's starting to do well. Um, last I just want to. I just want to tell the Jackson family that when they feel the need to send us a package, which I know is going to be drastically different, <laughs> just send it to this guy. Okay? He, uh, send it him. Maybe send it to his house. Cause I have a feeling whatever they're going to send, it may smell. It might he be ultimately a bag of garbage. He ultimately went two for five last night, though. So a great rebound to getting his home stats up uh, last night. Again, How do you explain I, that as a father? How do you explain that? Mm-hmm. Getting used to it now, I guess. You think? Just, you think he's getting into a groove? He's just getting used to, to hey, like acceptance is, I guess. Just like, is this like the game of baseball? Sometimes, you know, you go out there, it looks like it's a ping pong ball. Sometimes it looks like it's a beach ball. Is is life starting to look like a beach ball? I think so. Hey, maybe he found, uh, maybe he hit up Trey Cabin. and was like, hey, where's that closet you used to sleep in? Is that, <laughs> maybe, maybe he got a nap in the janitor's closet. Dude, the Trey Cabbage janitor closet <laughs> will cause you to hit a home run. At so, least one, yeah. I, I wouldn't doubt it if he did take a little, uh, Take him a little nap in there. But did you see Trey Cabbage for Salt Lake last night? Dude, well, it's just a, you're just rewashing every single night that Gosh. he has in Salt Lake. It's just a recap. Trey Cabbage hits a home run. Trey Cabbage hits a, And they're all over like 440 feet. He's dude, just dude. blistering the ball. I know. So much fun to watch. Angels, go ahead. Get him up there. Absolutely. I'm ready to see this dude hit some bombs. I mean, pros. a lot of familiar faces are already up there. Chase Silseth pitched, uh, started last night for the Angels. Ultimately, he did get the loss. He pitched uh, three and a third, gave up six hits, four runs, all earned, uh, walked a guy, struck out five, and only gave up one home run. Um, so it wasn't a great outing for Chase. But he was up there. Uh, Zach Neto is still up there. He went one for three last night, batting two forty two uh, on the season. And I don't think he played last night. But um, Levon Soto got called back up yeah. to the Angels on like Sunday or Monday, so he's there for that uh, series in Baltimore. So several familiar faces. The trash band is up there right now. But yes, Jeremiah Jackson had a great night last night at home, and I'm pulling for him to continue having great nights. And by the time we have him on the show, I want to be wrong. I want that theory to be dead. So I hope you're wrong too. I'm expecting a big night. Me too. Uh, again, this is a team the Trash Queens can beat up. Last night, uh, we're really praying that we didn't have to postpone last night. We had a little bit of a delay. It was an hour delay. Uh, we did end up starting that game at 730. And a lot of people hung around for that and stayed for the game. It wasn't until like the 6th or the 7th inning when it really poured down, when people were like, you know what, it's 8-4. to four. I'm good. We're going to go and head to the house. It was like 930. The game didn't end until like 1030 last night. Mm-hmm. It went almost three hours um, after we started. So with the delay, it was almost four hours here uh, waiting for some baseball. But we had the the lovely Pandamaniacs stay for it. 
They enjoyed themselves. Uh, the crowd, anytime something happened, even after the majority of them left with all the rain, were still loud and into it. So it was, uh, it was a great experience last night. We had martial arts night last night, too. We had five martial arts groups out there. Four of them performed on the field, um, all doing different things. So having that rain get ready to kick up was... Dude, I saw a group of kids walk in, three, three little kids in boxing gloves uh-huh. walk in, and I was, like, legitimately scared. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> These ten year old kids. They walked in with I mean the gloves were hanging, like they got their chest out, they're walking around like they're almost looking like I hope someone starts something with me. <laughs> that was <laughs> Arsenal Combat Sports and their theirs was so wildly different and it was awesome. So it was. we had first, third, first and third, and some of them were like they had their routines, they went out there and they were like kicking boards and they were, you know, spinning sticks. And then you get to Arsenal Combat, which was like four kids, and it was just Two and a half minutes of you two fight. Whoever taps, you leave. The other kid comes in. And there was one kid that I don't think got tapped the whole time. He just fought everybody over Dude, and over. They were running over. a tiny fight club out there. It was <laughs> yeah. insane. And it went on like all game. I was walking through the concourse, and one guy threw a dang roundhouse kick over. <laughs> He's like, Yo! And they go, oh, that was a good one. You got me. I'm like, hey, boys. Look, hey. It was really I'm not cool, trying man. to get into the scrap here. There was one girl out there flipping the, the nunchucks, and one had a stick. They had, like, little oh, kicking stations. Sabers. They had the rebreakable boards out there on the concourse. It was awesome. It was so cool to see all of them out there and represent. And we had, um, you know, over 400 martial arts representatives here last night, so that was amazing. Um, at least three or four of them out of the five groups hit me up today. I'm like, we would love to do this again next year. We would love that. And then that's going to spiral into the other martial arts groups that weren't able to participate this year that want to do something, and maybe we can get a couple martial arts nights next year. But it went really well for them, even with the delay. So that was really nice to see. But that delay had me worried a little bit. It was a little scary. It's the most geese I've ever seen in one place at one time. Geese? A lot of geese. I don't know what you don't means. know about that, bro. You run a martial arts night. You don't know what a gi is. I don't know what a gi That's is. the karate suit, man. That's like the thing. Oh, is you that put what the that belt is? around? It's called a gi. Mm. Yeah, didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Shout just, out Hoist Gracie. You don't know nothing about that either, do you? <laughs> not a thing. You run into that man. He got a gi on. He's probably going to lock you up. There were a couple, like not only just the kids, but there were a couple of the instructors when they walked in. I'm like, why is this guy listening to my direction? Like he doesn't. He could probably. He could be my boss, right? Yeah. Now. Just he, imagine he's like, we're not going on second. We're going on third. And he'd be like, oh, hey. All right, he would hey, ask put questions. That, put that karate chopper down, all right? When I gave him the answer to questions, I fully expected, like, no, this this is what it's going to be. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, yes, sir. You got it. All right, cool. We'll be in position R- real quick. Put this can on your head real quick. <laughs> <laughs> my dad did that as a kid. Oh. I always wanted to take karate growing up. and like, Because there was a karate place down by where – like my parents worked, and we'd always pass it on my way home, and I'm like, "Mom, Dad, I want to do karate," and they're like, "You're not doing karate." I just think they didn't want to bring me to karate the lessons mm-hmm. or whatever, and I was sure. so bummed. I was into the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, so I was at home karate chopping, whoppa, throwing kicks, doing all kinds of stuff, and they never let me do it. But one time, my dad was like, "Well, you know, I took karate," and I'm like, "Wait, so you're, so you're stifling my dreams?" But you get, I'm, he's like, "I'm a black belt." I'm like, "I, I do not believe that." I've never you own a black belt, but you got it from Dillard's, dude. Like you don't. That's not a. That's not the same thing. And he goes, "Oh yeah, well let me put this cane on your head." I'm like, mm, "How right. tall were I'm, you at the time?" I was probably like twelve or something. I, I was. I had a growth spurt in eighth grade, so I was pretty short. I think at this point, maybe like four foot. Yeah, in the fours. Fours. Yeah, I was a little guy. And uh, he puts that can on my head and goes, hey, check this out. whoop And he catches me right on the book. <laughs> Folded. Folded like a lawn chair right there in the hallway of my parents' house. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's why those those three little kids walked by last night. And I was kind of like, oh, hey, whoa. You... I don't want to put a can on my head, all right? Don't he do it. He would have had a better chance of convincing you he was a black belt if he would have just kicked you in the face. Had he not pulled the can stunt. If he was just like, watch this, and kicked you in the face, you'd be like, okay, that's. I've struggled yeah. for years, like. <laughs> was he really trying to do karate, or is he just looking at an excuse to roundhouse kick me in the face? And I don't know the answer Had to you, that to this day. Was that around the time you wrapped his own shoes up for Christmas and gave them to him as it a was, gift? It was pretty soon after. That's probably yeah, why. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, he was definitely looking for an excuse. You're not getting good Christmas presents after that. Son, I'm a black belt. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Toast. <laughs> so. Oh, man. Headgear. 
Headgear it's is important. crucial. They were walking around yeah. in headgear. They had it all. They That's really right. Go, they did it right. Not like not like uh, homeschool karate over here. One guy walked in and expected me to say something about the weapon he was brandishing. He was carrying a sword. Did he brandish it? Uh, he on the, on the field he did. I, he walked in with it holstered. I feel like I don't brandish enough things. <laughs> Keep going, this sir. He walked in with it holstered, mm-hmm. and I just kind of looked at it, looked at him, and looked at it, and looked at him, and he was just like he felt the need to tell me like, hey. It's not a. It's it's not bladed. It's dull. It's not a real sword. I, again, uh, he he was wearing a black belt, so I was just like, whatever, whatever you say, dude. Yeah, cool. You got it. Yeah. Why did he feel the need to? I don't know. To, they they to, felt like I had some sense of power that yeah. I didn't have. What would you have done if it was bladed? I don't know what I was nothing. <laughs> I would be like, hey, I don't think you can bring that in. If he if any part of him reached for it, I'm like, you know what? I I'm sure it's fine. I'd get those three kids from the with the boxing gloves, get my back. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh I'd, yeah. I'd make them force them out if, if we had a situation. <laughs> All right. Little security night would be fun. Little security Little Security <laughs> Night. <laughs> junior yeah. security junior, night. Junior the junior panda security program. <laughs> we'll teach your kids how to keep places safe. Oh my God! I think you're onto something there. I don't know how well that would catch on, other than the fact that I just want to see. If that. you're gonna take martial arts, you got to find a way to harness that power into good, and I see no better good than keeping uh, your local community safe. Right. Maybe you can work on that for next year, Junior Security Night. All right, I just saw a uh, a comment in the chat. I don't know when it came through, but Mommy Ovan's in here. She said, "Hey guys, so I think it's time." Dude, is it really? I think it's time. Hey, we're we're about halfway through. I think it's time to go ahead and. Pull that bad boy back out. Here it is. Get your final guess is in. What do you Mystery think it is? Mystery package. Everybody watching on YouTube, get your final guess in. What do you think? No noise. Something soft. Give it a little sniff. Does it Some, smell, it's, smell it's like a little it came hard. from the <laughs> Smells like it's been in the back of a postal van. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, there's. It's not talking to me. There's nothing. There's nothing. They're jumping it's out. Like it's not an, ticking. No animals. Yeah. Doesn't. Doesn't smell like the feds should be on this. Uh uh-uh. uh No, it definitely did not come from the cousin in Montana. This part up here, I maybe just because we've been feeling on it for two days, feels like it's bigger than this one down right? here. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. It's a. It's a, par- it's a trapezoid. <laughs> uh, it's. A, well, does you know that what? make sense? As the as the adopted son of the Yovans, would you do the honors? Rip that bad boy. <sighs> That's. That's big, dude. That's big. Are you sure? Yeah, rip it open. Let's see. All right. I'm going to take it slow, though, because I want it to be dramatic. I just want to say why you're opening it. These stickers that you put on here, like the warning, opening this package will cause extreme happiness. Wonderful touch. Yeah, pretty cool. Just awesome Pretty touch. cool. As you can see, again, unbroken, still sealed. Still sealed. In fact, sealed so good, I'm having a little trouble getting into it. Right. Nope. Oh, hey, whoa, we're in. What color we got radiate? Some of sort of apparel. It's Halo Blue. Halo, ooh. It's Halo Blue. Okay. What do you think? Well, I think it's a shirt. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> oh, there's two? There's one. Okay. I'm just going to. There's gonna, two? I'm blindly unfolding it, and I'm just going to show it to the camera. I'm just going to. What we got? I'm not even looking. <laughs> is it what I think it is? Yeah, dude. It's Yo Van shirts. We got Yo Van shirts. <laughs> Let's go. Look at that man. Look at it. Sprockets in the front seat holding the flag. Oh, dude, are you kidding me? Oh. Oh, now we just need a real van. That's so cool. Look at that. Well, thanks, Mom, Pa. Oh, and it fits so good, too. Yeah? It's like the perfect. I'm going to have to uh, throw this on every time. Every time the van leaves the garage and heads to the mound. And I hear that Undertaker get clipped up there. Every single time he comes into the game, I'm going to make sure I have this in the press box. Every time he comes in, I'm putting it on. Especially if he comes in tonight. Oh, there it was. <laughs> oh, yeah. If oh, Kenyon comes in tonight, I'm going to... Oh, no. He's on now. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. Put it on. Hurry up. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You hear the bells. I'm sorry. These are Virgil already got in, uh, and he said those are amazing. Caitlin says, uh, "OMG, y'all are so lucky. I need one. These are awesome." Um, I'm gonna make sure the cameraman knows 
that if Kenyon Yovan comes in at some point, if he strikes somebody out, you know, zoom in on him, I'm going to be standing up in the press box just like this. Let's go. Yo, man. <laughs> this is sick. That's Thank you sweet. guys so much. Proud to be a part of the Yovan Army. Like to think, uh, man, just just think about how far we've come on this on this mission of learning our new players and and doing this podcast and and meeting the Yovan families from distance and and now you know we we talk about a van one day and all of a sudden you're wearing a shirt with it on with a custom design. I feel like I'm one of the Vanimals, man. A Vanimal. God, I'm gonna weep. <laughs> that was freaking beautiful, dude. I feel like I'm one of the Vanimals, man. Let's go. Thank you guys again. Oh, this is gosh. this is amazing. Um, Dude. And I'm a sucker for light blue, too. So. Great j- great job with the halo blue here. It's very good quality. Very nice. Sprocket driving the van while holding an American flag out the window. If this you, thing looks like it needs to be racing somewhere. If you've ever gotten a shirt from somebody who's not like a, an apparel place, you know the, you, you know what kind of quality I'm talking about, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, the eh, it's either thin or it's a little tight. Yeah. This quality is phenomenal. Was this a cotton blend? This is a fun, no, yeah. I don't know what it is. This yeah. is this the tags are on the back, typically, for well, shirts. Well, I've got the shirt on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here. Okay. Let me see, Check Let me see what we got going on. What was that? What was a little, what, we got a, we got a little 50 50 blend here. We got a little polyester in this thing. Is it all cotton? What 100% you cotton. Oh, that's how you know it's good. Yeah. Who makes this thing? What is this? Hmm. Was this Gildan? It's Port Company. Oh, we got a little port here. Ring spun straight out of Beaverton, yo. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all. This is sweet. It is really nice, man. The, it, again, the quality of the shirt's really nice. So I got the hood too. Throw the hood up. Oh, I thought I, it's your hoodie underneath. I thought I was like, these have hoods. Mine doesn't have a hood. <laughs> yeah, mine's got a hood. I got gypped. <laughs> oh, sorry. You got the hoodless version. Yeah. What's well, up? I'm not the adopted. You're the adopted son. No. Man, dude, I'm just it's too bad. I'm like. Terrible at baseball because I feel pretty cool right now. You look like a bit. You got the hood. You got the the headband. You got the Yovan shirt. Yeah, if you just never ask me to showcase any of my skills on the field, <laughs> look, I'm feeling like a first ballot Hall of Famer right now. Oh, the position players are out there now. The pitchers were out there. I wish they were. So I'd get up and flash it to Yovan. I saw them out there working out fl- a little bit ago. <laughs> you gonna flash the team? Like, there you go, straight from the rooftops, Mardi Gras style. They're coming in really well on the feed too. Look at that. <laughs> Look how good those shirts come in. Oh, it, it ooh, pops. That pops. So, thank you guys again. Uh, Daddy Yovan says, yes, sir, my cousin is pretty amazing when it comes to this stuff. Oh, well, your cousin did a phenomenal the job. The cousin's in on it. This shirt is amazing quality. So, thank you guys again. we got to send them something now. Yeah. What we, do you guys want? What do we have that we could send? Oh, hand me that. <laughs> do you want, the, you want the Gallagher mallet I got a few years ago? We talked about that one. Probably not, right? No, <laughs> signed by Gallagher, by the way. That is how legitimately signed. Ricky Ricky met a hero and learned a lesson that day. Ah, hero is not the word I would use. But. Well, maybe at the time? Nope. No? <laughs> you showed up dressed up like him. I mean, I wanted to be nice, but he wasn't reciprocating that. So Maybe, maybe they weren't in here. Uh, maybe this was before the roster and everything, and they knew Kenyon was coming here, so they weren't watching the podcast. But uh, when Ricky and I used to work in, in radio, and um, – we worked for uh, uh, Cumulus, which had five stations here. It still has five stations here. So uh, in the same building was the Top 40 station, which Ricky worked on, uh, and eventually worked on the uh, sports station with me. But while Ricky was down there in the morning show, they had Gallagher come in. Yeah, he's doing um, some local gigs. He's doing a local gig. So Ricky flattered, uh, tried to flatter him, and, and showed up that morning dressed up like Gallagher. Just like him. Uh, had the had the wig, which Gallagher eventually stole. Which from he me. stole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still don't have that wig. It's like a forty dollar wig. He stole that, and then he signed a meat tenderizer for me <laughs> right before he stole went, my stuff. And then he went on the air. He yelled himself. at me. The first thing he said to me is, "I never wore suspenders." And I'm like, "Oh my god, <laughs> is this how today's gonna go?" And then he went on to tell offensive jokes on the air. Oh, it's so <laughs> offensive. <laughs> So offensive. <laughs> then he robbed you. And there was like rumor on the internet, like on radio, they're like Gallagher's a rough. Like if you get him on your show, just and I'm like, no way, that can't be true. No, it was all that was true. <laughs> <laughs> the guy was famous for beating up watermelons. Him and his agent got into a argument, and the agent left in the middle of it. <laughs> well, while he was there, yeah, he came and picked him back up, but he like, <laughs> and then they went outside and yelled at each other at one point. It was, it was awesome. So if you want, we can. <laughs> 
hook him. <laughs> now nah, maybe some panda gear would be better. Yeah, better, maybe. You know, maybe. Uh, well, you could just throw a sprocket sticker on the mallet. Ooh. <laughs> Opening this package will not cause happiness. No. Do we have any of those stickers? <laughs> we should. But uh, this was this was pretty amazing. Uh, this is one of my proudest moments in Trash Pant in my time here. You know, I was this close to naming the team. I almost won that contest. You did. And when that happened, I was told there would be a what what might have been night where we created jerseys to you know see what would happen if I did win. That got that got killed before the first season. So I mean, it was like. I never thought I'd get to this level again, and now Rock here we Yo, are. Man. We're rocking Yovan shirts. It's pretty awesome. The realization has been – it has reached fruition, has come to fruition. Do you reach fruition or do you come to it? I think you come to fruition. We have come to f- – ah, whatever. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, Daddy Yovan says he wants one of those championship beer belts. Remember that one I was yeah. showing off last time? We're giving away the beverage belt uh, in June here at the ballpark. You got it, dude. I'm sending. Uh, well, I guess I should send enough. Two, at least two. Yeah. Four. How many? What kind of belt you looking at? You get everybody hooked up. It holds six beverages per belt. Maybe a case's worth of belts. That feels fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. We got you. I got the address. Absolutely. We'll send it to you. Thanks. But I won't have. I won't have pretty uh, stamps on it though. We don't have Carrie, to. you did a very good job with the stamps and the messaging, and it all looks very good. You're definitely well versed in mailing things to people. I am not. I still have a pack of Alaska stamps I bought in 2013. Mm. I still got five left. So, yeah. And Virgil, yes, that does mean no Gallagher night at the ballpark. Yeah. He's actually dead. Yeah, he died. He died. He's he's not alive anymore. <laughs> so. Yeah. I but even if he was, it would it would it would be a horrible. We keep the microphone away from that guy. Don't. Yeah. Don't go live. Definitely not going to do that. So, again, thank you very much, Mama Papa Yovan. We appreciate the shirts. Very, Get the beverages. Nice. You got some belts coming this way. That's right. They're coming your way. Uh, Can I talk today? I guess not. I what guess is not. happening? I want to bounce back. because Let me do a little talking here. If you no, can't talk. please. So, let's go back to last night. Again, with the Trash Pandas winning, we mentioned that uh, Ben Joyce um, had been struggling finding the plate. I mean, he's still got four saves, which is uh, – up there in the Southern League, but he's just struggled finding the plate recently. And uh, we've seen, it, weirdly enough, with several of our pitchers that were good last year um, struggling this season. Like, I've seen Eric Torres hit a bunch of batters. He ended up finishing the game off last night, but he did hit a few guys. Or he hit one guy. Um, it, it's just been weird, and I expected to hear them say something about it. But, in fact, it was a hitter, a guy that's hitting very well um, in Kyron Paris, who leads the Southern League in home runs that said something a while back about the um, the enhanced grip baseball that they're experimenting with in the Southern Leagues. And I really want to get a pitcher's perspective on that. I really want to talk to Ben or Eric about that and see how it's impacting them because um, what they did, was it Spalding that, that produces the balls that Major League Baseball bought? I don't know. Spalding back in like 2018. Uh, or Rawlings, excuse me, it was Rawlings. Back in 2018. And what they'd been doing is they'd been pre-mudding the baseball's you know, up until this point, they've been, you know, uh, messing them up to, to get the grip better for the pitchers and things like that. So they're trying to find a way to pre-tack the baseball instead of making the baseball and then applying the mud to mess it up. And they're experimenting with that baseball right now in the Southern League. Weirdly enough, I did not know this until today. That's only supposed to take place through the first half. For the half. first half. The second so, half, they're going back to the old mud balls. They're going back to mud balls, which it sounds like it could help, but... I, are you going to be used to these balls by then? Is it going to mess you up going back to those other baseballs? I'm very interested by this story that really get, didn't get a ton of press. It didn't. We didn't know about it until Kyron made that tweet. Double A is is becoming like the lab for Major League Baseball. I mean, we get all of the experimental stuff. You know, we had the bigger bases before. We had the pitch clock before it was adopted. We had a different baseball last year, I believe, than the one we have now. Uh, or is it the same baseball? Whatever it is, we have a different baseball than what they use at AAA. Mm. Uh, and then now, halfway through the year, we'll be changing baseballs. It's it's crazy. I couldn't imagine being a pitcher and having to pitch a whole half of a season with a baseball. And then, like you said, getting used to it at one point. And then you got to go back to the old one, which I think judging – it seems like you either – you're having a lot of trouble with it, or you're having a lot of success. It yeah. seems like the middle ground isn't there. I mean, we've been watching games out here here for a while. Have you seen as many games as – what have we had at home so far, 20? 
probably about around. maybe yeah. a little more. Have you ever seen games for both sides where as many runs have been walked in mm. or hit by pitched in? I mean, I haven't seen that many since I umpired baseball for 10-year-olds back at Palmer Park down the street. It's crazy. And to see that much, I mean, you have to think these guys are very good at baseball. They should not be walking that. I mean, a lot of these are on like four pitches, five pitches. And some of the guys that are doing it too is the issue. Like Ben Joyce last year was so good in the limited time we had him that we were uh, – everybody, including Josh Kerr, I told Josh that – um Somebody uh, had told me that they thought Ben would be back here at Double A. He was like, "I think that's wishful thinking. There's no no shot Ben Joyce comes back here. He's he's been that good, and then he comes back here and he can't find the plate. And then you have Eric Torres, who won the Southern League or the uh, yeah, it was the yeah. Southern League pitcher, a uh, relief pitcher of the year, and he can't find the plate. And again, he came in and looked good last night. He did hit a batter though, so I mean, it's still an issue. So. If if this was just a new crop of pitchers, some young guys that were struggling finding the plate, I, I would I would probably right you know think a little differently from this story. But these are guys who were great last year, that some so good in fact that we didn't think we would have some of them back this year that are not only back but struggling. So there definitely seems like there's something to this. That's why I really wanted. To but on the flip side, you see a guy like Coleman Crow, who's been I mean unstoppable yeah. on the mound. So he's figured out a way to harness it. I guess it just depends on how you pitch or what your your go-to pitches are to, to how that grip affects it or whatever. But, yeah, it, it's at the extremes. You're awesome or you're you're not so awesome. And no, no I'm good this night, no, nothing. It's you, weird. And then now, midseason, we'll try it all over again. You mentioned being a, a minor league pitcher, trying to get used to two different balls throughout a year as well. Imagine being a minor league pitcher and having all these experiments that are affecting your game in a negative way while you're trying to showcase yourself to the major leagues, right? Like you're trying to develop and be the best player you can be, and you can use the even if it is a correct excuse, even if it is very valid, you can say, "Oh, it's the ball, it's the ball," but they're still going to look at your numbers, and and it's just not going to look as good, and and this experiment could be hurting you, and it, it and yeah. long term something you're not even going to use. I know. I wonder if that's an issue at the major league, minor league level where they when they meet for stuff like are we doing too much right. I, 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 I don't know man I mean then if you say you, you go through half a year two thirds of a year here then you get called up to triple A now you're you're pitching your third ball mm-hmm. third different ball of the year and if you're in Salt Lake you're in elevation it's like man this <laughs> is it's brutal man it's insane so uh, they're just it, it's all because of like in 2021 uh, I think it was 21 the offensive numbers were so uh, were at an all-time low in Major League Baseball because pitchers were using all the, the illegal substance and, and all that. So they're cracking down on that, and they're trying to find a middle ground by giving them a, them a ball that um, is you know pre-sourced up, pre-sticked up, so they can have the right rotation. But again, just in a long-term view of things, you've got a pitcher very good last year, not good this year, could be the ball, and it could affect how he's viewed in the major leagues and long term it's a ball that we may never even use again. And, you know, his dream or his, you know, uh uh chance may be shot or may be impacted based on a ball that we use for half a season that we're never using again. It's crazy. It yeah. When you think about it that way. So I really hope they get this figured out. And it, it kind of makes me even more excited to see uh, you know, I think it's middle of July when they're bringing the regular ball back. Mm-hmm. Um I can't wait to see that. I see I'm if our ready pitchers to see get it. even better. How many games have we seen where a team has more runs than hits. A lot. For us, the last two nights. I mean, we won, or not the last two nights, but last two games. On Sunday, the conclusion of our last homestand, we won 5-4, 5-3. Mm-hmm. We had two hits. Yep. They're getting scored on errors. They're getting scored on walks. Getting scored on hit by pitches. Last night, we had five runs at one point with two hits. <laughs> it's, it's not... I know if offensive numbers are down, that's good, but nobody wants offense through errors and walks. Mm-hmm. Agreed. 100% agreed. So, uh, I, again, that's why I really wanted to have Ben on today to talk about that, but we're going to get him on eventually um, and, and discover what exactly is going on with uh, these experimental baseballs. Uh, finally, before we get out of here, uh, just a little fun. I, I know that um, I, I haven't paid attention to it since I moved out because my dad – I don't live with my dad anymore. My dad's been a big fan my whole life of the uh, Sports Illustrated, Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. My grandpa had a, yeah. had a subscription to that one. My dad and, had a uh, very large stack of them um, yeah. for a long time. 
And uh, I saw today, this is the first time in a long time I've heard a lot of buzz around the Swimsuit Edition. And I heard because, number one, the cover of the Swimsuit Edition is going to be an 81-year-old Martha Stewart. Nice. And that picture's up there and everything. And I will say this, I, when, when they said Martha Stewart's age today after I saw that picture, very surprised she's in her 80s. She looks good for an 81-year-old woman, really good for an 81-year-old woman. You girl. ever seen Martha Stewart in her prime? You ever seen Martha Stewart 50 years ago? No. 30-year-old Martha, Martha Stewart? Was model, looking, dude. 30, 30-year-old Martha Stewart looking good? Go ahead, look it up. All right. Martha's always had it, but at 81, she looks amazing. Okay. I found myself watching a lot of cooking shows last night. It, like, sparked an interest. I went back into the way – see? Wow. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I almost even, – even though I think Martha still looks very good as an 81-year-old woman, doesn't look the same. I can't tell it's her. But, wow, okay. So, with that in mind – The first rodeo. The same first photo shoot. Well, I guess not. With that in mind, I'm just curious. Like, if they were to do a Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Senior Edition, who are you tacking up there with Martha Stewart? Got, the, to, got to still be alive. What's the age minimum? Minimum? Yeah. I, this might be a little too uh, young. I want to say at least 60 or above. But I'd maybe say 65. 70. I'd say okay. 70. 70 and above. You know. 70 and above. Ooh. I don't know. Who are you thinking? Hmm. I was hoping you'd at least give me one before I had to go, <laughs> go dig down. This is your idea. I know. What do you think? I don't know. Um. There's an older lady that's still alive. That would... I don't know how old she is. I have to look up how old she is. Hold on. I don't know why she, she popped into my head. I just know she was like an 80s bombshell, so maybe she's not quite at the age yet. No, she's only 65. I was going to say Michelle Pfeiffer, maybe. Michelle Pfeiffer, okay. No, I'm thinking older. I'm thinking maybe 80s the number. Maybe the Martha line. Oh, my God. I don't know too many, <laughs> I don't I don't know too many ladies that are 80 <laughs> years old that I could pop up there. I don't either. Um... A lot of them, unfortunately, are starting to pass away. Like uh-huh. with some of the popular ones, like Betty White, a couple years ago, gone. Um, is Cloris Leachman still alive? Did she passed away. Cloris Leachman? I don't know. know. I don't know if she's still. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of an old. No, she passed away a couple years ago, too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. This is, this is a tough one. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't. I don't have a uh, a huge bench up in my head right now. Of oh, either seventy year old plus women. Um, I don't. You set the benchmark at seventy. I was trying to go at least sixty, sixty five. So, I don't want. I mean, that feels like senior at sixty. Feels like oh, that's yeah, that's a little early. That's fair. That should fair. at least be the seven zero. Okay. Who's uh? No, I, I dude, I haven't. I can't think of a single person. I'm just gonna look up famous '60s actresses. Famous actresses from the '60s. They'll be old enough, right? Sure. Actresses from the '60s. Yeah, they'd be they're gonna, that age now, right? They would be like, sh- yeah, they would be well into that, I believe. Well, should I look up in the '70s? Because I don't know. Just find me something. Throw right. some names at me. What you got? Well, the first two I don't believe are alive anymore, so. You should do all-time. This is too tough. All-time? All-timers. All All-time right. All-time senior Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. But I don't know what we, they would look like at 80 if they didn't make it that No, early. if they made it to 80, though. Okay. Well, I don't know how old these people lived. I don't know how old Marilyn Monroe was when she passed Oh! Away. How old was Marilyn Monroe? You had to have been able to see them at, ooh, Jane Fonda in here. Uh, that's, yeah, that's a good one. You see her 80 for Brady? See her? Her <laughs> face has not aged. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm there's no doubt been some some construction done, but <laughs> her her face is, looks very it's, it's just like it's without wrinkles. What? Why did I like how uh, Robert's putting all dudes. Peter Fonda. Let's go. <laughs> Peter Fonda and Jane Fonda. That'd be an interesting photo shoot. Clint Eastwood? Clint Eastwood? William Shatner. As an, as ooh, current day Clint Eastwood, <laughs> I would not want to see that. He looks – he's scary looking. Current day William Shatner, 90-something years old, went to space. Clint Eastwood was always an intimidating-looking guy. Yeah. But now with age, he, like, he looks like – really, like, scary intimidating. I feel like the rest of his body would look intimidating, too. Like, his abs would look mean. Yeah. Hey. They'd look mean? <laughs> yeah. I feel like they'd look tired. <laughs> probably, yeah. Probably like, why are we still visible at this age? <laughs> <laughs> I would, 
These apps would like to retire at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Cheryl Ladd? I know that name. I don't think I know who that is. Hold on, let me look her up. Cheryl Ladd. 71. What does she do? She does. She looks really good for 71. Was she uh, in Charlie's Angels? Yeah. Yeah. Charlie's Angels. Sweet. Yeah. Good pull. I watched an episode of Charlie's Angels the other day on, uh, I don't know, one of those random channels that just shows old TV shows. You ever watch an episode of that? Once or twice. You ever get caught on there? No. You're watching some old school Charlie's Angels? I don't get caught on there too much. Oh, that's too bad. You're missing out. But I've seen. I've seen the old school Charlie's Angels. I was also a big Lucy Liu fan, so I like the the. Oh, you like the newbies? Yeah, I like the movie they made. That's cool. Yeah, I guess I'll have to go with Clint Eastwood then. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like William Shatner would do it in a heartbeat, too. No way. Absolutely. He went to space at like 91 years old. I like to think of my William Shatner as T.J. Hooker, police officer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You ever watch that show? Sheriff Officer T.J. T.J. Hooker would come on after Charlie's Angels. (laughs) I know of it. I don't think I've ever watched T.J. Hooker. Oh, yeah. Heather Locklear came on as a sidekick one season. She was on there for a little while. (laughs) I really only know William Shatner from two things. I know William Shatner from Star Trek. Yep. And I know him as the the president of Dodgeball when he was uh, trying to get the match played and White Goodman wasn't having any of it. Nope. Strictly, strictly T.J. Hooker for me when it comes to Shatner. <laughs> it was funny we were having that conversation because the other day um, I was watching one of the Austin Powers movies, and you know Mike Myers, Michael Myers plays uh, Austin Powers. And Did you call him Michael Myers? What's well, his name? No, it's nobody he calls him that. They call the the murderer from all the Halloween movies Michael Myers. But his name is Michael. Nobody calls him Michael Myers. But it's his name. No, it is not. I mean, technically, yeah. It's okay, name, well, there you go. Mike, Mike Myers, Myers. His name is Michael Myers. Yeah, but when your name is shared with a fictional <laughs> serial killer, you don't... I didn't say he goes by it. You ever heard of the actor name. Michael B. Jordan? Why do you think that B is in there? <laughs> That's fit. You can't. You got to change it up. Michael John Myers. It's Nobody calls him Michael Myers. Oh, hey, look, it's the comedian Michael Myers from those Austin Powers I movies. said Mike first and then said Michael. <laughs> I... More of a both. All right, keep going. I'm sorry. Um, well, we were talking about Michael Myers, and we were talking about... Uh, what? We were talking about Michael Myers. You're um, so stupid. We were talking about Mike, and <laughs> Jen was saying how uh, he will always be Shrek to her. Like I, And, and it's funny, because he's one of those actors who can be known, like, that can be his thing, because yeah. Shrek was really popular. Well, when you think of Mike Myers, because I, I'm sure there's one direction you'll go that's probably different from the first two I mentioned... When you think Mike Myers, what do you think? Probably Halloween too. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I think of Austin Powers. You do? Yeah. I was. I, I wasn't or sure Wayne's if, World. I was going to say I yeah. wasn't sure if you'd go Wayne's World or not. I've only. I, I was never like into Wayne's World. I've seen the first one. I know yeah. of the second one. I'm not really familiar with it. But Mike Myers to me is Austin Powers. He's always Austin Powers. Yeah. Did you know Shrek was actually supposed to be played before it was Mike Myers by Christopher Farley? He actually. Um, uh, recorded some of the lines. Mm-hmm. Like you can go mm-hmm. and look some of the videos up of, of Chris Farley, um, or as you mentioned, Christopher Farley. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I was having trouble following. Reading some of those lines yeah. as uh, Shrek. And they, they they made it drastically different when they had to cast Mike Myers, Michael Myers. Let's end the show, dude. You're getting like, fired up by name pronunciations. We got a couple some more good ones in. right here. Cher, Linda Carter. You know who Linda Carter is? The original Wonder Woman? Yeah, how old is Cher now? The original Wonder Woman. 76 years old. Chip. Underrated. All right. Linda Carter. Yeah, the original. Wonder Saw her in a movie the other day. She was playing a real witch. Let me tell you. <laughs> what movie was it? I don't remember. Oh, well. Oh, she's, my wife was watching. She's 71. Cher's older. Cher's 76. So, there you go. Farrah Fawcett. Farrah Fawcett popped into my head, too. I Former Attorney General Janet Reno. Who? Google that one. You'll... Not now, later. See, Farrah Fawcett, I thought Farrah Fawcett had passed away, so that's why I didn't go with her, but you mentioned all the time, so that's why I was throwing her in there. Um, Ah, someone else you could put in there if you wanted to go political. Nancy Pelosi. There you go. Throw her in there. She's old enough. That's the reason why I thought about it. She fits the the age criteria. All right. Well, (laughs) I got to go. I got to go steam my Yovan shirt, so (laughs) maybe we should wrap it up. Yeah. All right. That's going to do it for us today. We'll be back Friday. Hopefully going to have a player on for you on Friday. Um, we keep getting snubbed. Yeah, man. I don't know. All these random things keep popping up. It might up. be our handler. Who knows? 
I think you're right. Well, we'll figure he does out. it a third time. He's coming on the show, and he's going to put him on himself. trial. <laughs> With this. Ooh. That's a good. Yep. Going to save that one. <laughs> Thank you again to uh, the Yovans for the awesome shirts. Uh, it just make you feel even better, too, that these are, like, the only two in Alabama. I love it. I love it so much. So many people are going to ask me, hey, man, where'd you get that? How'd you get that? I'm be like, it's a family thing, dog. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We straight out of Beaverton, yeah. Man. <laughs> thank you guys again so much, and thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll be back on Friday, hopefully with a player, to discuss some of uh, what's going on this season as well.